and welcome to my cosmetic surgery experience or talk. Um, I did put up a poll on Instagram about what you would like to see first, my Primark haul or my cosmetic surgery experience. And being the little gosses that you are, you chose the cosmetic surgery goss. So here it is, I'm going to get right into it. <laughs> If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you would like to like it, comment it after it's done, have any questions, let me know. Um, there will be a two-parter to this. If I don't answer anything that you're wanting to know about today, you can either DM me on Instagram with Farah, you can email me with Farah at gmail.com, or you can ask me in the comments. So let's get straight into it. a list it's not a very comprehensive list in fact I'll show you it's the most incomprehensive list you've ever seen has three points hmm <laughs> not a planner am I but anyway so I researched for years for years and years not first few years I didn't actually research it properly I just used to look at like surgeons and before and afters and read people's stories and what they had done and what they thought but when it came to my first year of uni when I was 18, 19 I really researched. I came home from uni one year and I was like I've done the research, I found the surgeon I want, I've looked at before and afters, I've booked my appointment to go see him, mum please can you come with me to come see the consultant she came with me I did actually say to her but I'm not telling dad you can tell dad because that's just a bit of an awkward conversation isn't it oh hi dad I'm gonna get implants woo yay okay cool bye <laughs> so we went to the spire in Leeds this is a private hospital they own their hospital unlike Maya and Transform and other companies who I don't actually think own their hospital, they just rent it. And so we went to the Spire in Round Hay in Leeds and I had Dr. Fenn. I chose Dr. Fenn because I didn't find any negative reviews about Dr. Fenn or his work. And I personally knew somebody who had had a boob job with Dr. Fenn because it's a very scary thing choosing someone who's going to cut you open and put something inside you it's very very scary and you shouldn't take it lightly okay if you're having any type of surgery or procedure now normally if you don't know your surgeon you will book in with a company and they will give you an appointment with a patient coordinator and then the patient coordinator will match you in a way to a surgeon that they think will best achieve what you're wanting. You can get teardrop implants which are kind of like the shape of a teardrop and then you can get round implants which are a circle. You can also get saline implants um, which is like a watery salty solution I believe and I feel like these implants are better if you're going larger. I know they do saline implants larger than they do silicone and the other implant type is silicone. I opted for silicone, I never really thought about saline, it was never really discussed and that's fine with me. When you go to see a surgeon, he won't tell you I can take you from an A to a D. So the implants are CC sizes. So I had 225 CC I think. I said to him though, put the biggest implant in that you can fit. Hold on a second, don't gasp. Like my friend thought, she said, oh, don't get it done, you'll come out looking like Katie Price, Jordan, uh, it'll look fake, why would you do that? Hold up a second. I am a five foot five, and before I was probably a bit thinner, so probably like eight stone three or something, or eight stone. I can't fit Jordan sized boobs in me. Jordan, at my or Katie Price, let's call her, could not fit her size boobs on her first operation. You need multiple operations to build up the size of your breast pocket 
where your implant goes and your skin to stretch to get to that size. You can't just go in from A to, not Z, but we'll call it Z, A to Z in one operation, usually. Now, I think I went from an A-ish cup, I don't really know, to about a CD, and that was at 225 cc's. Your implant can either go under or over the muscle. I had mine under the muscle. What this means is that the top of the implant is pinned down by the muscle. So if I show you here, the muscle is here and the implant comes out under it. So if you've got teardrop implants, there is one risk that it might move around and turn if the breast pocket is larger. For me, he put in as much as he could put in and sew up, gross, <laughs> that it's very tight anyway. So mine wouldn't really move. I was very thin and I didn't have much breast tissue. So by putting them under the muscle, it removed the chance of the implant being visible on the surface. So if I had my skin and then it went up a bit because of the implant and then down into my implant, that would not be a good look. The lighting has just changed, I'm sorry, it started to tip it down, so I'm darker, so I'm really sorry about that. The main one that stuck out for me was the risk of capsule contraction. I think I'm saying that right. Now this is where your scar tissue um, sort of contracts and tightens around your implant, and this can cause it to become really hard, like a rock, or it can distort the look of your implant in your chest. I worried about this because when I scar, they're sometimes raised, and I was like, oh god, no, what if this happens? Because it was quite common. It's not something that happens to only 2%, it happens to quite a lot of people. However, I have not had any problems so far. Another worry is somastia. This is normally if the surgery is done wrong. Also, if you're thinking of surgery, there is a negative stigma to cosmetic surgery, and I am very aware of that. I am aware that some of you watching this will be like, why have you done that? Don't judge, okay? Don't judge. If you're not in the same position, keep it to yourself. Keep your thoughts to yourself. Prior to getting it done, I did so much research. I was on forums, I checked out surgeons' websites, personal websites, I checked out the company's websites where the surgeons were, looked at before and afters. This is where the forums come in really handy. I know Maya do their own forum for their website, however, I don't know how monitored, moderated, I don't know the word, that forum is because it is linked directly from their website. I don't know if it's independent enough, but you can go find independent ones anyway. And you can look at YouTube videos and you can ask people on Instagram or on YouTube or Facebook or friends, family, I have heard some horror stories on forums, I have seen horror stories. I'm not going to name and shame surgeons or companies in this video. If you personally want to know because you are looking into this, then you can DM me and I will be honest with you. The day of the surgery, I went in as a day patient, I went in the morning, um, my dad stayed with me for a bit and then I had my surgery. I was in a private room, I had an en suite, I had a TV, um, obviously like nurses on, doctors on call, there was a window, it, you weren't, it wasn't a horrible experience at all, it was quite relaxing. You weren't allowed to eat or drink all day though, which that was a difficult one. So the main thing that was uncomfortable during the whole experience prior to going home was the anaesthetic. The general anaesthetic going into your arm is like liquid ice getting shot into your veins. I don't even know if it goes into your veins or not, I'm not sure. But wherever it goes, it's a very strange sensation. But anyway, I woke up, none the wiser. Have I even had surgery yet? Who knows? So. I left in the evening and I couldn't really sleep in my bed because, not because it was uncomfortable to lay down, but because I couldn't lift 
my arms up or put pressure on them, I couldn't lift myself out of bed if I lay down. So I slept on my sofa in my room and I just had pillows around me to keep me propped sitting up but also kind of in a slouchy thing because my arm muscle was probably the most pain and it was more like discomfort it wasn't pain I was never in pain even when did they take the stitches out or were they dissolvable or what I can't remember but I never experienced any pain just a bit of discomfort I went back the next day I believe and had everything checked I think this is what happened and then I went back like a week or so later and it was all okay everything had gone how it was meant to go and there were no problems so I was very lucky in that case I had mine under the muscle so I think supposedly your recovery time is meant to be quicker if you have them over the muscle however I only took my painkillers or and anti-inflammatory I don't really know what I was on but I only took them for two days after my operation I do have quite a high pain tolerance however it was less pain and more uncomfort so uncomfort discomfort and more discomfort so because I had them done under the muscle all the muscles here are connected so you literally, you cannot lift your arms. I'm not joking, you can't reach for something on a shelf, you can't uh, push yourself up off a sofa, off a bed, you can't pour a kettle, all the tiny things you don't even think about, you can't do. So I actually slept on my sofa in my room, I put all my pillows behind me and I slept upright, so I was sat upright. I don't know why I'm doing this, I think you know what upright means. I don't mean standing, obviously. And I did this because I couldn't push myself up or have someone pull me up because of the muscle situation. My friend at uni who also got a boob job at the same time as me, I think we we're like a few weeks apart in surgery, I'm not even kidding, it was really strange because I didn't know. Well, she got hers done with transform i believe if i'm wrong i will correct myself in the description box below and hers cost about three thousand she went from i'd say an a or a b to a solid d double d and i did speak to her so obviously i went through four years of uni with her this was in first year and she didn't say she regretted getting so big but I think she would have preferred to get a little bit smaller. She didn't realise how big they were going to be because like me, she just said as big as you can get and for her, luckily or unluckily, however you take it, um, she, was, she could fit a lot more. Whereas my surgeon, I said, as big as you can get it, within reason, I knew I wasn't going to come out looking like Pamela Anderson, but he, he couldn't get any more in than 225cc. He couldn't stitch me up. It's a bit gross, isn't it? <laughs> but... Mine were 5,000 and obviously you can go lower and you can go higher depending on where, which country you get them done, um, which company and all sorts. Do I regret it? No. No, not in the slightest. I don't regret it at all. If you're thinking of getting cosmetic surgery or a procedure done, do your research, make sure you're sure, talk to someone you can trust don't pay attention to people who only want to bring negativity into it if they're giving you advice because they genuinely care about your welfare that is okay okay people aren't going to agree with it people aren't going to understand it because they haven't done the research that you have done or that you're going to do so it's okay for them to have doubts but if they're just being negative for the sake of being negative doesn't matter ignore them ignore them okay and just one thing to remember, normally a silicone implant lasts about 35 years. Depending on when you get your implants, you may have them for life or you may not. You may have to have another operation to rejuvenate them, re refresh, get new implants. You may want to go up a size and this is just one step in your journey. Or you may have 
so other surgeries where you need to have them taken out or anything like that so please remember that this is a journey it's not just a one-stop shop so if you have any questions if you want me to go into more detail about a certain area if I haven't mentioned anything DM me on Instagram or email me on withfarah at gmail.com comment below or figure out some other way to get in touch with me maybe Pinterest I don't know and I think that is really all I have to say. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, give it a great thumbs up. Uh, give it a comment if you want to either leave a comment or just be supportive. Whoop, whoop. Um, and yeah, next one will either be a Q&A catch up of this or it will be a Primark haul. Woo! Okay, bye.